number one DJ. He has just been nominated for the best DJ in the world at the NEA New York. And we've got him live on the magazine show. Mr. Exclusive. Yes. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 I mean, it's uh, it's nice to be here. Yeah. You know? um, anyone watching? This is actually my first time on on, on TV. So, Mama, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> is it? <laughs> it is. It is. It is. I mean, we told, see, we told you, man. We bring you. Yes, <laughs> 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 yeah, man. You know, so shout out to Ben TV, man. You know, yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, man. You know. So, so it? We're good. We're good. But we're here to talk about you. Yeah. Huh? We're gonna talk about obviously the NEA thing, but let's mm-hmm. just take it. Take it back. Where were you born and where have you grown up? Um, I was born in London. Um, I'm a Nigerian boy, but I was born in London. Um, and uh, I went to high school in Nigeria and uh, came here for A Levels University. And um, ever since I've been here, I've been here for 10 years actually. Yeah. yeah. So I was here in 2000. And I've been here. Wow. Okay. Chilling in jail. <laughs> Trying to milk the money here. What part of Nigeria are you from? For I am America. from Lagos. Lagos. From Lagos State, yeah. You sound like who? I'm on no. If I am this one, I'm in Jebu. What part of you Jebu? I'm in Jebu, but you know, Jebu is deep, but I'm. Wow. They don't look it. I, I don't see. Do they have a look? Okay. Yeah, they do. What's right? their look? Uh, like. Ah! <laughs> no, it's just joking. Don't for me. Nah, it's just joking, man. Thank you, mum and dad. So, oh, I mean, like I said, obviously, mm. no one will know you from that part because I'm even thinking you're from the eastern part of Nigeria. Okay. Yeah, okay. until you said it now. Yeah. So, for those who want to know. Yeah. yeah, man. So, how did you get into the DJ? DJing? DJ, man, I mean, I get qu- a question. I don't know. You know, it's the passion, like I say, man. DJ, um, DJ came along when I was. I remember this was when I was in high school. I was in um, I was in SS1, and back in the days we used to use cassette players, you know. And I remember we I, I got like two cassette radio cassette players, and I just just mixed it. Just basically press play, pause, on pause, play, <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't make sense, but I was just doing it, you know. Then we moved over. When I moved over here, uh, I managed to download a software called Virtual DJ. Um, Virtual and, DJ. Yeah, that's what I actually downloaded, and um, I started just just downloading music, um, and from there I got inspired by the beats. I love beats, and I used to be a dancer before. I used to dance. So what kind of dancing? Well, I, you know, break dancing. Break dancing. I used to pop. I used to Harlem Shake. Yeah. I used to do a lot. And um, the beats were always my my drive. I just I love how beats were mm. made and how beats just make the crowd move. So um, I, I just one day I just started getting into the DJing. You know, and um, from the software, you can actually DJ on the software. It was on laptops. So I used to do all that. Uh, and I remember it was actually, this was 2003. Uh, that's when I actually started. Um, 2003, 2004. Then I was dating a girl. Um, I'm not going to mention her name. <laughs> she actually bought my first equipment. So that's when I actually started mm. properly mixing well and practicing. Right here in the UK. Yeah. Right here in the UK. Mm. You know, and uh, the name, I'll just say this on the side, the name exclusive. Mm. I actually came for one of my friends. Um, before exclusive, a lot of people used to call me DJ Bootleg. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And that was because I was always first to get all the new tracks. Mm. I was From always line wire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, no, that was, was Aries. I don't know. Well, I used to use Aries. Aries yeah. Limeware. Yeah. Um, we used to use that. And so they used to call me Bootleg, Bootleg. So one day we were all in my hall of residence, all in the room. And um, one of the guys I know, this guy, we can't call you bootleg, you're too exclusive, your music is always exclusive, you're always first. So we thought about it, hmm, exclusive. Then they said, why not the hypnotic DJ exclusive? Mm. But I was like, guy, that's too long, you know, you, you'll be biting your tongue before you sit down. It was just short and I said DJ exclusive. And from there, it just... It just kind of stopped. It just it stopped. Just stopped. You know? people like it DJ stopped. exclusive. And here we are. Yeah. <laughs> seven, seven, eight exclusive years. Exclusive of Ben TV, <laughs> you know? Yeah, so, no, it's good yeah. to have you. Definitely good to have you here. Um, so you got your first equipment, and then what was the next step? Um, okay, so I got the equipment. Uh, next step was now to get the gigs. Mm-hmm. That was it, to build the confidence. As a DJ, you need to have confidence yeah. to face the crowd. So um, I remember my first, uh, this was actually, it was in the union. Um, they gave me a trial. The University yeah, Union. University Union, uh, Reading. Uh, they gave me uh, a trial, three weeks trial. 
in the union and uh, said I should play music, just entertain the crowd. And they gave me the big venue. This is called, or rather, this was called 360. Mm. So I had the opportunity to go there, DJ. And I remember, I remember mixing Usher's Yeah. That was when Usher's Yeah was raining then. Then, funny enough, Nigerian <laughs> music was not yeah. in the picture. It was not about no, Nigerian yeah. music, you know. It was just about R&B. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 so we were playing Usher's Yeah. The only Nigerian music big there was Ulufumi. That was ball. Yeah, Star Plus. That was Star Plus. But uh, I, remember, I remember playing, mixing Usher's Yeah with a song like... Uh, Maybe a song like picture a song like head, shoulders, knees and toes. Fuck so, mm-hmm. It didn't make sense. Mm-hmm. But I remember doing it and in my head I was just going with the beat. I was just going, yeah, yeah. and I'm not looking up at people and they were not moving. Mm-hmm. I couldn't understand what was happening. They were not moving. They were not moving. And for yeah. three weeks in a row I did that crap. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> and the lady called me into her office and the manager and she had to lay me off. She was like, I'm sorry, the crowd don't like you, you're whack, you're this, you're that. And I remember going back. And you know, it's funny because I remember at that moment, mm. people always said, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Of course. So I remember going back to my room. Uh, I was really down. I was confused. I was like, why are they not liking me? Why are they not doing what I, you know, they don't like what I'm doing? Uh, I remember for a whole month, I packed up DJ and I said I wasn't going to DJ again. Focus on my books. And for some strange reason, um, a lady, some girl I know, her elder sister, uh, she was 20, 25 then, and she begged, fully enough, she begged me. I don't know why she was begging me. <laughs> she begged me to come and DJ at her gig and uh, that was when I, I did it there mm-hmm. and I guess they inspired me they sort of boosted me kept yeah, on encouraging me yeah. you can do this you can do this yeah, went for the gig I did it and it was alright I mean it wasn't perfect but it was you it know, was, it was, it was nice. I mean they saw so many they saw so many and for me I guess Sometimes that's what you need, need, yeah. What you need. Yeah. and for me I, I guess for me, for me, the reason why I went back is because I saw the way they were dancing and all having fun. I don't know if they were drunk. I don't know. <laughs> they were all having fun. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, you put the drink makes the fun. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I know the ladies there, there and the fellas there as well. <laughs> you know, but so for me, that's where everything just kicked in. Uh, my major breakthrough was in Birmingham. There was a party called Ignition. No shit. Yeah. Really. <laughs> but there was a party called Ignition. He remembers it. <laughs> and uh, we had about a thousand people there. And uh, it was, like I said, then it was not even about Nigerian music, but everyone had a good time. Mm. And I think that's when my confidence started building up. And I, I went to Birmingham, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you told me this last week. I did? On the, on the show, on the show, on the show. Ah, yeah. See, she's not like me. Who promoted the um, Target, Target, Target GM. Yeah. Target? Yeah. Target. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've done stuff with Target. Oh, yeah? yeah, Target, you know. <laughs> yeah. You need to pay up, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> You've come you've come leaps and bounds since then. What do you think has been the key to your success as a DJ? Um a lot of people might not believe this, but I'll say prayer. I'll be honest with you. Um first thing first, prayer on God, man. Like mm. uh it, it's been a funny ride, seven years. Um I'll say prayer and I guess hard work, you know, listening to other DJs mixtapes practicing a lot, um, always listening out for new beats, trying to understand the music, um, and taking people's advice. But the key word is being humble. Um, trust me, trust me. Like, in life, you can never you can never go anywhere without, if you know, unless you're humble. Um, and uh, I have realized that. I mean, I've had my experience. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I've come to realize that, trust me, you need to be humble. So, all of that, I think it's, and I guess working with the right people, mm-hmm. you know, has also put me out there as well. So saying, you know, it doesn't matter if you're paying me this amount, I mean, there's some people I won't work with. I bet. I sat in stage. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I, I guess when you're standing up, you can't, I mean, it'd be ridiculous to go charge a high amount. You know, you need to pay your dues, as I call it. Mm-hmm. So, and I did, I paid my dues. I remember back in the days, a DJ at parties, they tell me, excuse me, man, the party didn't rock, we can't pay you. Yeah, I haven't paid your dues for Excuse me. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Speak to my mother again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. You know, we're talking about, I mean, exclusive, you know, like you said, those days you used to play the American the hip hop mm-hmm. until the Nigerian mm-hmm. Afro beats mm-hmm. come mm-hmm. in. Mm-hmm. How did you kind of accept that into um, your okay. DJ at that time? I'll be honest with you, when the Afro beats came in, I wasn't too happy. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I mean, oh, right. my, 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 because. I mean, it changed the game. Like, I was really getting so hard into my R&B and hip-hop, and I realized, I realized that at a point that it seemed like every gig you go to, yeah. it's Afrobeats. Yeah. You know? And I had my Afrobeats, but I was upset that, hang on, people are no more into R&B again. No more hip-hop. What about Usher? You know, none of yeah. that. No one wants yeah. like that again. Yeah. And 
I realize it's I'm, gathering dust. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> So, um, but once it started kicking in, uh, mm-hmm. I love Afro beats. I'm not gonna lie, yeah, you know the beats, yes, they're beautiful, beautiful, you know. Yeah. And uh, once it started kicking in, uh, one thing people have to realize as a DJ is the crowd that matters. You don't mm-hmm. determine the music; it's the crowd that the crowd, determines yeah. the music. Yeah. So, and I realized that look, man, the crowd want to hear Afro beats. Mm-hmm. So you just gotta give it to them what they want to hear. Mm-hmm. And um, obviously, I started recruiting my Afro beats music.